What's up guys? Mr. Primich here, making a snack with Marley here. And I just couldn't decide what I wanted to do. Should I have a cheese quesadilla, peanut butter sandwich, or some pickles? And I'm having a really hard time deciding, but you know what? I kind of want them all, so I think I'm gonna invent a new snack. A peanut quesadilla pickle dia. I think I'm gonna whip that together. But you know what? That actually reminded me of a really cool character trait I want to share with you guys. Talking about this, Marley. Innovative. Let's take a closer look at this word. Right, looking at our character trait, innovative, it comes from the verb innovate, which basically means to make something new, to create, to change, to adapt. And then we had our old friend the suffix ive, meaning that you have the tendency to do it. So an innovative person is someone who tends to create, make new things. So to define our word officially innovative, Let's say that means full of new ideas and advancements, or that you're creative in your thinking. Let me give you an example from our friend Carl. Carl, the other day, was out at recess playing, and he was having a really good time, but he wanted to play some soccer. So he had his ball ready, and all he needed was a goal, but the unfortunate thing was that his school didn't have any goals. Did that stop Carl? No way. But Carl looked around the playground to see what he had, and he ended up finding an old wool ski cap and a rock. So Carl picked those up and he placed them about just as far as he needed to make a goal. And boom, instant soccer goal. Nice shot, Carl. Goal! Let me give you another example. Carl is a very responsible robot. He helps his family out. One of his chores is to walk his little brother Carlos in the stroller after school. And he also is responsible for walking their robo dog named Sprockets. Now this is a big job and it's really hard. Carlos is usually crying and Sprockets is usually pulling and this really frustrates Carl and made him really upset. So what he did is he went to the lab and he came up with an idea and he took Carlos's stroller and he attached two different dog leashes to it. Uh, and there was instant dog powered stroller. Great work until Sprocket saw RoboCat. Hey, come back here with Carlos. So to just draw it out for you guys, think about um, taking an invention or a creation and innovative means you're just gonna constantly try to improve it, make these awesome sneakers here. Uh, some non-examples would be same, repetitive, unoriginal, or old-fashioned. And a sentence would be, this is an innovative design for that house. I've never seen anything like it before. So that's a look at our word innovative. Oh my, that's looking good. So innovative. Today we're going to look at an innovative character from the book Papa's Mechanical Fish. And the character is named Papa. But he's actually based off of a real person named Laudner Phillips who actually did take his family on an underwater excursion in Lake Michigan. So this is a really, really cool story based on the true events. So I hope you enjoy it. Papa's Mechanical Fish. Today's story is called Papa's Mechanical Fish. It's by Candace Fleming, with pictures by Boris Kulikov. Papa's Mechanical Fish. This is my Papa. And this is his backyard workshop where he spends his days thinking, tinkering, and inventing things. Hear that? Click, clankety, bang, thump, woo! That's the sound of Papa at work. Click, clankety, bang, thump, woo! Sometimes Papa tries inventing helpful things like collapsible coat hangers that are easy to store. Sometimes he tries inventing unusual things like edible socks. Edible means you can eat them. And sometimes he tries inventing playful things that just only just don't work, like steam-powered roller skates. He forgot to put the brakes on. Yay. Oops. Oops. But not once has Papa invented anything that works perfectly. I will someday, Papa tells me. All I need is a fantastic idea. But fantastic ideas are not easy to come by. So Papa twiddles his tools and pulls his hair. He racks his brain, sighs and stares until one day, he throws down his screwdriver. Enough thinking, he cries. Who wants to go fishing? I do, I holler. Me too, says my brother Cyril. Don't forget me, adds our sister Mary. My dada, squeals the baby Wilhelmina. <laughs> Woof, barks our bulldog Rex. I'm so glad I brought along these poles, dada. says mama. Yes, I'm your dada. We all troop out to the lighthouse pier and drop our lines into Lake Michigan. Papa, I say as we wait for a bite. Have you ever wondered what it's like to be a fish? A fish? 
he mutters. A fish? Uh oh, squeals the baby. Papa pulls. Papa's pole clatters to the pier. He leaps to his feet. He whirls me around. Vienna, you're brilliant, he whoops. Then he is gone, racing back over the sand dunes to his workshop. Click, clickety, bang, thump. <gasps> Ta-da, cries Papa a few weeks later. He opens his workshop doors to reveal. What is it? I ask. Oh, it's an underwater vessel, he explains. A mechanical fish. I will dive like a salmon. I will glide like a trout. Papa's mechanical fish is so small, he barely fits inside. It has a tube sticking out the top so he can breathe. It has a pole sticking out the bottom so he can push himself along the lake floor. I call it the whitefish, he says. But will it work? No. Uh. We keep our fingers crossed. Goodbye, Papa, we wave. Farewell, family, he waves back. Then the white fish is launched. But... Papa swims back to the pier. It almost worked, he says. Almost, I agree. I think for a minute, then ask, Papa, how do fish move through the water? With their tails, says Cyril. With their fins, has Mary. Fishy, go, squeals the baby. Woof, barks Rex. I'm so glad I brought along this towel, says Mama, and she wraps it around Papa's shoulders. But he is too deep in thought to notice. And... Click, clankety, bang, thump. <gasps> Behold, the whitefish, two. It's big enough for two people to sit in. It has a wooden fin on top and a wooden propeller in back. Papa pedals it like a bicycle to make it go. Goodbye, Papa, we wave. Farewell, family, he waves back. Then the whitefish, two is launched. It dies below the surface. But... Crack, chip, splinter, Papa bobs back up to the surface. It almost worked, he hollers to us. Almost, I holler back. I think again, then ask, Papa, how do fish stay dry? With special skin, asks Cyril. With scales? Adds Mary. No, pee-pee, squeals the baby. Woof, barks Rex. <laughs> I'm so glad I brought along this life preserver, says Mama. She tosses it to Papa, but he is too deep in thought to notice. And click, clinkety, bang, thump. <laughs> Behold the whitefish three. It's big enough for three persons to sit in. Yeah, three people to sit in. It has a plunger to make it go up and down. It has a steering wheel to make it go left and right. It has levers instead of pedals, and it is covered in waterproof copper. Goodbye, Papa. We wave farewell, family. He waves back. Then the whitefish three is launched. It dives. And it chugs beneath the waves. But... <laughs> Papa clings to a buoy. It almost worked, he says minutes later as we pull him into the rowboat. Almost, I say. I think some more and say, Papa, how do fish know where they are going? Can they see underwater? Says Cyril. Do they have good eyes? Adds Mary. peek a Squeaks the baby. Woof! Barks Rex. I'm so glad I brought along these oars, says Mama. She rows towards the shore, but Papa is too deep in thought to notice. Now he barricades himself into his workshop. Click, clinkety, bang, thump. <laughs> he does not come out. Tunk, tunk, tunk. We cannot go in. Tap, 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 tap. He even covers the window so we can't peek. Zzz. What's the big secret, I ask? Wait and see, Papa says. Just wait and see. Click, clinkety, bang, thump. At last, he flings wide the workshop doors. Surprise! Ooh, we gasp. Ah! The whitefish four is big enough for seven se people. Seven to people to sit in as an air cooling system, an air compression system, and an air purifying system. It has a steam boiler to run the engine and a battery to run the headlights. It has velvet carpeting and comfortable chairs. Along its length are a dozen portholes. Papa grins. Who wants to go for a ride? I do, I whoop. Me too, says Cyril. Don't forget me, adds Mary. Go, bye-bye, squeals the baby. Whoop, barks Rex. I'm so glad I brought along lunch, says Mama. Thanks, Rex. One by one, we drop down through the hatch. Then Papa seals it behind us. 
takes his place the controllers and swoosh, swoosh. Wow. Cool. Big so fish. Hours later, we rise to the surface. We glide to the beach. We spread out a blanket and feast on ham sandwiches. Papa, I say between mouthfuls, that idea was absolutely, positively fantastic. Brilliant, says Cyril. Clever, adds Mary. Yay, squeals the baby. I'm so glad you brought me along, says Mama. And she gives Papa a big, big mwah, smooch. Then the seagulls fly overhead. I toss it my bread crust. Have you ever wondered what it's like to be a bird, I ask? A bird? Papa mutters, a bird! Uh-oh, squeals the baby. Clink, clankety, bang, thump. Guys, <laughs> think, Papa's Mechanical Fish, one of my favorite stories. It's also cool because it's uh, based on a true story. So my innovative challenge for you guys this week is to do this. I want you to think of one problem that you have going on in your life or a problem going on in the world, and I want you to brainstorm some solutions about what you would do to try to fix that problem. Now remember, your first try doesn't have to be perfect. Just think about Papa and his mechanical fish. So get out there and start searching for solutions. Be an innovative thinker. Now I'm gonna get in on this innovative peanut pickle dia that I made. I'm just gonna take a big old bite of that. Oh, oh, oh. I think I need to go back to the drawing board. Marley, why don't you come show us what you got working on? Mommy. Yeah, show, show us. Oh, oh wow. That's, that's actually really good. Mommy.